Hey guys, today we're sharing an update on our window boxes and we are going to be showing you how we water, fertilize, clean, and pinch these big window boxes we have here. There's so many bees on these salvias here. These are the blue Victoria salvias and anytime I come over here then they come and they buzz around me and um, I'm never afraid of getting stung or anything but um, they're crazy around here right now. They're just really getting in there. Jason got some really good footage of all different types of bees and insects in the garden. He just put that video out called um, A Bug's Life. He That's had right. fun He had fun making that, I didn't was, you, hon? Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun making that. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and just water these because they really need it. So today it's a soaking day. I never just water just halfway, you know, like I wait until something really needs water and then I go and I just soak it until it's dripping out of the drainage holes from the bottom. And on top of that, it's fertilizing day. So we are coming up into the beginning of August here. And so things need water more often and we're upping our fertilizing. So I am fertilizing every other time we water. These need water every three to four days. So we're fertilizing about once a week right now, once a week, once every week and a half, okay? So all we do is we mix fertilizer right into our water for our plants. We use either the Jacks and we also now this year use the Peters and they're kind of similar and you can use a bloom booster or whatever you, whatever you want. But all we do is, um, Jason, if you can come over here Jason's so far away, I'm like, come on, we got to show them what's going on here and how to do it. Oh, you're going to need glasses to see what's going on. So all I do is, um, I usually have a fertilizing injector, but we don't have one on our front area. So we'll have to get another one for next year, which makes it super easy. But up here, we're going to do it the old fashioned way like we've shown you in past videos. So this here is our fertilizer and we only use this kind of stuff on our flowers. If there's edibles in a container, we do not use this. For organic, we use either the Agro Thrive or the Espoma. They both have, um, okay, I'm gonna wait for that bell. Okay, they both have a liquid feed, which I run right through our injector for our raised beds and that makes it super easy. But now that I've got that in there, I just fill it up with water. I'm just going to let it go ahead and mix and as the water's filling in there, I kind of stir it with the end of the hose a little bit. Is that one teaspoon you put in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah about one teaspoon I'd say. What the heck's floating in here? <laughs> Normally you don't want to put your hands in fertilizer water and if you're a little worried you can always wear gloves too, but honestly, I'm just, I'm around it all the time. So by the time I'm 80, I'll probably be glowing. <laughs> so when we water, we always try to water underneath the foliage, okay? So we're always gonna stick this underneath the foliage. I'm never going to water directly on top. When you start watering on top of your foliage, you're just gonna flatten it out and you're gonna create um, a growth that looks flat. It's not going to look good, you know? That's that's the whole point of watering underneath. Keeping it nice and under that foliage. You can really even dump it on. Usually I'll push the foliage and just dump it on like this so that way we're not monkeying around. I, I mean, I got a lot to water so I don't have time to pour, you know, five of these cans in here slowly at a time, you know? I mean, we gotta, we mean business here. So a lot of times I just move the foliage and dump it on and then just kind of fluff it up right after that. And then we're gonna move on to the next section. Do the same. Mix that teaspoon, fill it up. And as you can see, it's dripping on that side, but that's also because that's not really from the water getting to the bottom roots. That's really just because there's an opening between the seams of the wood window box because Jason built these for me. So these aren't um, bought in window boxes. That's the secret to our window boxes and a lot of our containers is because we give them awesome room to grow. Awesome room to me is a lot of space for the roots to grow. If plants don't have a lot of room for their roots to grow, they're not going to grow that big. I mean, could you imagine as your feet are growing, still wearing 
a pair of shoes that's two sizes too small, your feet would start growing kind of really funny, right? And that's what would happen with your flowers. They kind of just stop or they don't look as good. They look almost stressed. When you give them more room to grow, they're gonna do more for you. They're gonna get bigger. They're gonna last longer. They're just gonna be ultimately a lot happier. So here we go. I'm gonna show you the dump method. So we already got this end here. So I'm gonna come into the foliage here. And if you have a hose, you just stick the hose underneath the foliage, but I'm just gonna kind of push back on this foliage. See, and just dump it in. Voila, we're good. Everything looks nice, no damage. Because if I dump it on top, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get the middle part Make here. Look good. No, you're gonna get what, the flat mo? Is that yep. the mo? Flat <laughs> the flat top. <laughs> Nobody wants a flat top no. container, I'll no. tell you that. No. It just, right. You always want something going on on top. You know, it's nice to have some stuff trailing in the front, but you always want a party on top. You don't want that flat top. So here we go, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna have Jason stop the video for a little bit so you guys don't get bored watching me just keep filling these things. All right, this is number three. So we're gonna come right about here, lift up on that foliage underneath and tip. There we go, okay. And then we'll do one more on the end. And then we should be pretty good and everything should be dripping. If it's not all dripping on the bottom, I'm gonna disperse another one throughout evenly and uh, that should do it. I mean, I've got the science down to about four or five of these bad boys and then that way we can be done and we can move on with the lesson to show you how we keep them looking gorgeous because it's not just all about watering and fertilizing. There's a lot more to it and it's actually kind of gratifying and fun when you see the other steps. And then we're on our last one here now, so I'm just gonna lift and dump in. I know right now you guys got the beautiful view of the whole window box. Isn't that just gorgeous all the way through? I'm gonna show you the secrets to keeping that like that all season. There's no reason why your container shouldn't look like this all season if you follow these steps. Okay. I'm putting the microphone up to the drips. Hear that sound? That's the sound of, uh, it's time to move on. <laughs> Happy All right. So we're going to come in over here and we're going to check it out. I always just stick my finger in there, bring up some soil. There's a little bit of dampness, but by the end of the day, it's going to be dry. You just get to know your containers like, like family and friends, you know, you just know what they need once you're really, you know, watching out for them and taking care of them. And I can tell that this guy is due for some, some water. So we're due gonna do that. Service. Due for okay. service. And it's not serve yourself, so they need help. I'm gonna wait to water that one and just kind of go over the maintenance with this one for you so I can just keep it rolling. And Jason only has so much time because the kiddos are getting impatient. So here in the background, we've got our coleus, which is just finally taking off. It took so long to take off because we had that really late frost and um, around the end of May, which really stunted all of our coleus. And now they're finally taking off. They're getting nice and tall. So I'm gonna show you how, how I'm about to uh, create them to be even bushier than they are now, because I want them to fill in these gaps. See how this one's filling in this gap right here? It's above the Vista uh, Fuchsia Supertunia here. This is filling in on that flat top right there because I pinched this already a week ago. So it's kind of just coming in here and filling in. And that's kind of what I want it to do over here. That's the habit that I want over here. So I'm gonna have you come in here, Jason, up close and we're gonna give them a little look-sees here at what, what's going on. So a week ago, I already took off um, the tips here that's pinching. I'll show you that in a second here. But once you take that top off, you're forcing all of the growth on this stem to start bushing out there. And that's really what you want because this is towards the front 
of that back coleus, there's already enough height to go around in the back. So I wanna start forcing more of the bushy growth right in here to fill in the spot so we don't end up with these empty spots um, in another week or two. You know, you want things to fill in and keep filling in and flourishing and looking great. Um, and I did the same thing with this one here. So this way, they're, um, they're gonna kinda grow in together a little bit here and create a really nice full effect right there. So now what I'm going to do is Back here, there's another area of coleus. You can see the tall ones in the back. Now the tall ones in the back, I'm gonna kind of just leave those. You can pinch everything if you want, but for now I'm leaving them because we haven't had this growth this year yet. This is really late. Usually we do this pinching video already like a month ago. So um, this is very unlike our season. It's very odd, very drought-like all season. So. I'm gonna have Jason come in. I'm gonna show you how I pinch and what I mean by taking off the tip. Um, so right here we have a coleus. All right, and it's growing nice and tall, but look at all of this beautiful growth on the side. So that's gonna grow out either way, whether you pinch or not, but it's not going to focus on that growth as much if you allow the top to keep just growing. So what I do is I go ahead and right on the top here, we're gonna pinch this off because it's also getting a flower on it. Once it gets that flower on it, it kind of just stops, you know? It just, I don't know, you just kind of have to take that off and it just refreshes the whole plant. So once, once that tip is off of there, that's focusing more of the plant's energy on all of these growths along the stem and that promotes it to start bushing out. And then when those bush out, then they're kind of building upon each other. So then that way, if we're getting heavy winds, they're really locked into place with each other rather than just growing tall and whipping around and then they're just gonna break their stem. You know, you want them to intertwine. Look at these guys, they're crazy around me. Nice. He touched me, but he didn't sting me, so that's a plus. Um, but that, that's why you want them to like really intertwine into each other because then they're holding each other up, they're protecting each other, they're taking care of each other it's like a it's like a family unit when you put plants together they get used to each other through the season and they're really just helping each other out um, uh, through the rough parts of um, whatever nature throws at them okay so now I'm gonna go over to these petunias here so um, with super tunias they already have a beautiful natural growing habit especially this beautiful Vista series Vista series is known for mounding petunias and trailing along with it so they kind of give already that full appearance so if you didn't want to pinch your vista series petunias that's that's completely fine but you know me i can't help it i do it anyway because overall it still makes them even bushier so that's what's awesome so all season at least just i, I actually only um i actually only pinched these petunias once this year Oh my gosh, I can hear the cicadas. That means fall is coming. I, know. I love the cicadas. I do too. I love that. Yeah. No, that it just means even August the air. This year. Even the air. Our... I'm sorry. I'm fall crazy. I'm like fall. <laughs> 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 bring it on okay um so with these i'm gonna have you come up close again jason and i'm just going to show you what i do with these and it's the same thing as the coleus but once again you know you've got your your vine that's coming out right here all right so i'm going to show you on this vine i already took off a flower so you can really see the detail of what i'm going to do here so um if your petunias are starting to have a lot of um this new growth on the on the front of the vines coming out what you do is you can take this right off and if you're afraid of losing a flower you can just go as close as right here okay i don't have time to monkey around like that so i really just go like this or i take a scissors and i trim it like a little bush because um you know I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> so I just like, you know, you do what you gotta do. And it turns out looking beautiful. But when you do that, just like with the coleus, it stops the growth from growing out and forces the growth along that vine to bush out more. And that's how you inter intermix and, and get them to grow in together. So that way it's more of a tangled ball. You know, like say you've got a head of hair and you want a full look, you can blow it out as much as you want, but it's teasing that holds it in, you know? So this can get bushy all you want or look great all you want but as soon as you start pinching and they start growing into e each other it's kind of like that teasing effect where it holds it in you know um, and that's what I love about it a lot of times with petunias too if you have old flowers just give them a 
little fluffing lift them up if you notice this one here it's getting really long and it's right on top of everything else so it's kind of weighing it down you know you kind of want it to flow like a waterfall so i'm just going to kind of try to pick this one up here a little bit and get it to go this way i did pinch the tip a little bit but you know what i'm not really liking that so much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually bring it back to there don't be afraid of doing that you guys i'm going to pinch this one here to kind of push all of these growths out um, and then that way it'll just last so much longer rather than just looking like flat and just like you know not super awesome so i don't want i don't like bare spots so if you don't want bare spots then you know do what i say <laughs> <laughs> and then with the victoria blue salvia they just do their own thing i don't have to do anything other than take off a dead flower here and there and i haven't even had to do that yet victoria blue salvia's flowers last so long and they attract so many pollinators and beneficials that they're just an awesome flower to put anywhere whether it's um, in your flower beds in your window boxes containers even alongside edibles they're pretty amazing and they do well even through the cooler weather and look really nice through the fall with that touch of blue with the accents of oranges and then with our snapdragons they're pretty simple you know i mean you enjoy the flower and when the flower is completely done like right here i'm going to show you quick when the flower is done you can really just take it off right here okay and then it all of this growth along the stem will have new growth coming out more and that'll be multiple blossoms for you but what you can also do with snapdragons is leave that dead flower on you can just pull off the dead looking flowers on that stem and is and if you see if you want to come close jason so they can see this if you see with snapdragons, there will actually be a whole nother flower shoot that pops out of the top of the old flower and you can have more blossoms than two. Sometimes I do that, okay? So I, let, I allow some of them to do that because I don't want it to go without flowers. So I'll do that with about 50% of them. So when the snapdragon flowers are retired, I'll remove 50% of those dead blossoms, but leave the rest. So that way those ones can shoot a flower right out of there and have some color while the other ones are taking their time to bush out and create a cluster of new flowers. So that's what I do with that. And then in here, we also have this beautiful Jolt Dianthus. It adds that hot pink color. Um, when I first planted it, it had all these beautiful pink flowers on it. I cut it back after they were done and look at we're already getting new flowers again but there are other flowers that need to be retired. So here's an old retired cluster of the Dianthus here. And all I do is pretty much just snap it off. You can also take a scissors to that. But if you notice right here, look at all of this new growth. All of these are gonna be brand new clusters of flower, flowers in this beautiful, bright, hot pink Dianthus. This one's called the Jolt Dianthus. So it's flowering all season long. So it's perfect for containers. And you want to remove those dead flowers. Um, you'll still get other flowers even if you leave them on there, but it won't look as nice. Um, you won't get as many. Um, you're just always better off removing the old to allow the plant to focus all of its energy on the new and um isn't that true with anything in life it is it's a good life lesson no matter what <laughs> yeah i mean you know you can't focus on the old you gotta always move and push forward to that's the new right. That's right. so um that's how it is with the plants if you ever realize we actually are all connected yep. we all have a lot of the same traits needs and necessities so um that's how i take care of my window boxes um, that's what we're doing now. If you guys want to see what all these varieties are, I do have a video explaining what's in here, how we planted it when it's a lot smaller. So you can kind of get more of a visual of um, what's in here and what's going on with this container. And I will put that right up, up top here for you, um, right where my finger is or right here one of those it pops up somewhere but you can click on that video and watch that if you love this combination um, one thing I do miss in our window boxes this year are the cannas 
Yeah. I really miss the cannas because the cannas get so nice and tall or that vertigo grass, which is that dark leafed grass and foliage. I love covering the windows. This is perfect for those that don't like their windows covered. Right. Um, but I love the windows covered because from the inside of the house, it's just this beautiful green dark foliage and you get the trickling filtered light. It's just gorgeous. It's just to die for. And we don't have that here this year, which I do miss inside the house. But you know what? We're just grateful to have this beautiful combination and to have this coleus really, you know, pop through for us this time of year. And um, just look at how gorgeous and, and look at what we're providing for, you know, the nature surrounding us. They have so much food around them to harvest and, and they're pollinating and, you know, you just got to do your part. So, um, yep. And that's that's it for my video, you guys. So if you don't already subscribe, feel free to click the subscribe button and click the bell. And don't forget to put a thumbs up if you love it and if you love this combination. So thank you so much for joining us today, you guys, and have an awesome day.